Luke, could you tell me what's your obsession right now? My obsession is to probably make images in a very compulsive way, and, but also to make images that make sense. But that's not new. That is not new, but it's an obsession. But what's new? Huh? What's new in your mind? What's new in my mind is that I actually find more and more pleasure in painting than I did before. Oh, that's strange. interesting. Yeah. Why? I don't know, maybe getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming uh, wiser. I wouldn't necessarily say that, maybe becoming more stupid, that could be it. <laughs> <laughs> but you are speaking about what's going on now in the world in this exhibition. I do, yeah. Yeah, which, which is uh, we're going through kind of like uh, pretty chaotic times and I think not only very confusing, but certainly very dangerous. So they are times that are actually virtually existential, I mean, when it comes especially to our Western Hemisphere. And in that sense, it would be a little bit difficult not to address that. Yes, but uh, so could you, could you speak? Because it's a mix of the news, in a way, and art history. It is a mix of several things. It's also the mix of the pictorial and what you believe and what you don't believe, because and what would be the truth, what could not be the truth. And the truths are sort of invariably linked and in a way they're actually juxtaposed. <laughs> and the show is actually quite complex because it's, <clears throat> on the one hand, takes it on like with the graphs in the show uh, as a sort of like real research, but it then also goes into uh, the things that are pretended, like the pictures behind me, the maquette of the big red ball, who was one of the maquettes of the which was developed during the 30s or the late 30s by Heisenberg and his group, and shows the ball of uranium that was sort of like used to create the H-bomb. So there, there are different sort of positionings or the portrait of myself, which is sort of floating, depicting the sort of like somewhat elderly white male who is having a problem with his anger management in the sea. <laughs> but floating where you don't see the hands nor the feet, so it's sort of like lost in this sort of... Uh, well, actually, uh, a reality that is coming close to a delirium, in a sense. But you are also speaking about polarization? I'm speaking about polarization because that's Can actually, we go there? Yeah, because that is actually the... Just like the force you see here, about like three Democrat presidents and one Republican, I think, and it's... The research that was made by several people out of different with different universities and they produced these graphs and the graphs went from 1951 to 2011 and so you see the red ones which are the republicans the blue ones which are the democrats and since you can see that after the war there was actually still a huge bipartisan situation because of the gray is where it's bipartisan and then like with Obama, it was all already fucked. So you can see the huge division between the two. And I also hung it here because the shine of the red ball actually make a connotation to the red lower part of that painting. So it's not only about an an angerness, but also about... It's politics, yeah. But it's about anxiety. We have to worry. No, it's about the state of things. I mean, it's like, it's about a great deal of, I think that the idea of polarization is extremely dangerous. I mean, it led us to a war, basically. And uh, one, because one shouldn't forget that once when, when you put out the wrong signals, somebody will take advantage of it, which was exactly what happened. For example, everybody, even under Trump, the generals would have said Trump, which they also said to Biden, not to leave Afghanistan during the summer, but do it in the winter, which he didn't. Then you have AUKUS, where the Europeans were not invited. And then you have the 6th of January, which was a disaster. So that might have been the moment where Mr. Putin decided to ah. actually go ahead with his plan. That's interesting. And, what and that's all done through the idea of polarization, which was also instigated from abroad. So in that sense, even the, the little ironic portrait of myself 
is part of it because that's also part of the polarization. But uh, what is the role of images in this chaotic world? The role of images is always the fact that it should allow people to think, to people to reconsider, to reconfigurate, to at least be trigger this 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 sort of idea that there is much more than you can actually see or even understand. So that is what And do you think it works? I don't know, that you have to ask the public. I mean so. <laughs> But have you observed some kind of reaction? I observed the, the, the reaction you can measure. I mean, when people see this, they can think of a virus, they can think of the tricolor, they can think of several things. When they see the ball, they would, might love it because it's sort of gives warmth. It can be ice cream. It can be ice cream, it can be beautiful, but at the same time, it's a totally horrific. But I mean, but that nevertheless, they will be engulfed by the color. So, in that sense, there are different layers. And that's a reference to Rodko, you said. Yeah, because I always loved. Rodko, because that's exactly what he did. He sort of like made these portals into the paint with paint, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And and uh, yeah, but you, you you work with understatement. Yeah, okay, but fine. But the, so, so 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 did Rodko in a sense. I mean, I, do, I also think that's quite understated, but it's really as itself as a painterly statement out there. And so what's your next dream now? I know, I, I, just, I, I actually want to do a little holiday, I think. Ah, to be again like that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we are waiting for the next painting. Merci. <laughs>